back to The Mill, a podcast brought to you by Mill & Co. I'm excited to have a really, really wonderful guest and former client, Adrian Simpson, whose pronouns are he, him, and his. Adrian Simpson is an accomplished director of operations in the hospitality industry with a remarkable career spanning various key roles. His journey began as a front desk manager at JW Marriott Essex House, New York, where he managed various front office areas while maintaining high guest occupancy levels. He later excelled as a guest relations manager at the Carlisle, a Rosewood hotel, where he fostered relationships with VIP guests, promoted hotel services, and ensured brand standard compliance, doing a lot of really important things for a lot of really important people is the summary of that statement. Adrian's tenure at the Yard, Space to Work, showcased his exceptional leadership. He started as a community manager and advanced to become a regional director of business development. He oversaw multiple locations, effectively managing day-to-day operations and negotiating agreements. His strategic vision and community engagement events significantly contributed to increased occupancy rates and the successful acquisition of a federal government contract. In his current role as Director of Operations, Adrian leads operations across 10 locations, implementing efficient systems, driving growth, and managing a large team to foster professional development. With a diverse career background that includes early positions in luxury hotels and key roles at the Yard, Adrian Simpson is a proven leader in the hospitality industry, consistently delivering excellence and growth. It is an honor to have you today, my friend. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. So, first of all, what is the Yard? Yes. The Yard is a co-working space collective. We are based here in New York City. We've been around for about 12 years now, starting with just one location in Brooklyn. And we've grown to now having eight locations across Manhattan and Brooklyn, as well as one in Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia. We're a space that really is built on the community. We're built on being able to uh, have fun in the office while also being able to prioritize serious work really building connections, being uh, local neighborhood stakeholders, and helping our communities thrive. Yeah, amazing. Well, it's it's very important. I've worked in many co-working spaces in my time and continue to do so. And it's it's just such an incredible creation for not only small businesses, but also medium and large businesses that are like, you know what? We don't really need to have that space anymore. We just need something mm-hmm. functional that meets us where we are. So right. as the director of operations, what does a day in the life look for you look like for you at the yard? Yeah, definitely. It kind of touches across so many different aspects of not only the um, day-to-day operations of the space, but also just the running of the organization of the company. So mm-hmm. I have a hand in overseeing parts of our HR function, parts of our um, sales funnel and function, our marketing function, which is you know how we originally got connected. And then, of course, just the day-to-day operations of running 10 spaces and keeping them going and all of the equipment and people and uh, resources that go into that. So you're really bored is what I'm hearing. You just like, <laughs> do it and you're just like sitting around and like, give this person some work people. Okay. Yeah, no, that's not. crazy. That's so much to do. <laughs> Seven years later, no two days are the same, which is one of the things that keeps me excited to get engaged. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting. I just had a conversation with um, a student at Johns Hopkins university who I mentor and I shared with them that, you know, they were like, well, what kind of job do I look for when I graduate? And I, I thought about it and I was like, you know, you want to find an opportunity with a lot of opportunity. Mm-hmm. Because if you pigeonhole too young, unless you're like a doctor, a lawyer, accountant, like something very specialized, mm-hmm. specific, you know, it's really great and useful to have experience in a, in a multitude of things because you're doing a lot that could technically be, you know, uh, characterized as a lot of different departments and things, but mm-hmm. it's made you a really well-rounded worker and leader because you've had that experience. Yeah, absolutely. And I completely agree with that. I kind of took that same advice when I was thinking about what to do career-wise as well. And that's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards hospitality, because looking at it, uh, it's just an industry that's so vast and that isn't really going anywhere ever. And there's so many different things that you can do in the hospitality world. And, you know, I did get my start in hotels specifically and did that for quite some time before pivoting um, and working for the art and being in a co-working space now is very much a hospitality focused and minded business um, just in the, in the setting of an office space. Yeah. 
And speaking of the hospitality industry never going away, there was a threat to that, you know, a few years mm -hmm. ago in the form of a global mm -hmm. pandemic called um, coronavirus, COVID-19. Maybe, you, maybe you've heard of it. Um, Not once or twice. <laughs> I may still have, you know, wake up screaming wearing gloves and a mask. But, um, I'm really curious, Adrian, because the world shut down. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that was non-essential and co-working spaces mm -hmm. fell into that category, no. you know, which, which for the, the people and the business owners using them, it was essential. Right. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm just curious, you know, how did you navigate that time? Talk me through the experience of that, because mm -hmm. that is a lot of businesses never came back from that. Um, yeah. and here you yeah. are continuing to grow and, and serve all the people that, that use your space. Definitely. It was quite an interesting experience because we obviously took out all of the mandates for the local cities that we're in. And so when they went to full, you know, work from home, social distancing mandates, we called the team um, out of the office. We were all working from home, getting people set up with being able to assist members remotely. Members weren't coming into the offices themselves for the most first few months. And so the offices were, you know, virtually empty. And it was about three months or so in until those first ordinances started getting lifted and people were able to start um, coming back into the spaces. And so we made a return to work plan. We completely, um, you know, re-envisioned the offices. We set up sanitization stations and we set up, just took away furniture so people could social distance within the offices. Um, we came up with social distancing, like rate plans for teams and companies that wanted to come back into the space, um, but wanted to obviously keep everyone safe and um, not have everyone kind of on top of each other. That's one of the big differences you saw in the industry from, you know, pre-pandemic until during and post, where, you know, if you had, a, let's say, a 10-person office, you might have 10 people in there <laughs> but now today you might have like four to six people in a 10 person office even <laughs> though you know social distancing isn't the norm anymore people are still have kind of just come to really wanting to um be able to create space and space and um, kind of spread spread themselves out a little bit more yeah well and i think what's what's the important takeaway there adrian is your company made really proactive decisions to try to give people a little bit of normalcy back. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of companies that didn't do that. Um, there are a lot of companies that unfortunately went under. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there were some companies that were like, it doesn't matter. You have to be back in the office. You have to be here, it, you know, come at your own risk, but you have to be here kind of. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I think I, I'd love to hear what, what that did for your, your team members, your, mm -hmm. your colleagues and the people that are, that are renting your space. How did that make them feel? Yeah, I mean, I think they definitely appreciated that we took it seriously. You know, at the end of the day, yes, we're all here to work. Our health and safety comes first, and so that's our number one priority. And even for our teams, I mean, for people that maybe were able to compromise and needed some additional uh, support in order for them to be able to feel comfortable coming back. And so doing that, not only one for her own team, but then also for members in the space who also are dealing with not just um, themselves coming into the office, but then who they're sharing their homes with, their lives, and everyone else that they're coming into contact with as they're commuting and coming into and out of the office, all of that, you know, really taking that into account and seeing how we can both do our job and keep everyone safe. Yeah, absolutely. I, lo I love that you have that mentality. I think it's the right mentality. And I'm curious now, you know, we're, I guess, considered post pandemic, <laughs> you know, it's this weird time of our lives now. Uh, how have things, if at all, changed or stayed at the yard locations? Mm -hmm. Are things relatively back to normal? You know, what's, mm -hmm. what's the landscape looking like now? Yeah, I mean, it's been an uphill climb. And I think one of the things I was talking to someone recently is that we keep expecting this big real return to work push mm -hmm. to happen and it keeps being like okay you know we're almost there we're almost there you know maybe next year we've been saying maybe next year for about two years now <laughs> um and we're like we're getting there but we're still not quite there yet mm -hmm. uh you know we are we have been seeing occupancies increase over the last few years but it certainly mm -hmm. isn't back to what it was like at pre-pandemic levels um but people are still continuing to return people are still finding ways of coming back uh we have the many members that even may have an office but still use it in like a hybrid sense 
where they're maybe not coming into the office every day, but they are using it when they do want to come in. Um, we have teams that work in hybrid shifts and schedules still now as well. And so being able to accommodate that and how they want to work, as I mentioned, also um, teams looking at taking, you know, like larger and multiple spaces to still be able to kind of spread out and have, um, their team together, but not maybe all in the same room. Those are definitely a lot of what we're seeing. Do we continue to, you know, look forward to seeing more people wanting to return to the office, particularly more teams, um, because that's really where you get the vibrancy of working space and location. You know, multiple teams in the same space where they're working on different um, industries and projects and across different networks, but coming in together in the space and uh, being able to network and kind of build that community. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And if so, if anyone's watching and you happen to be in the New York City or DC area, yeah. please look up the yard because you you may have options. You know, even if you're yeah. um, you enjoy working from home and you want sort of some sort of custom partnership, you know, this could be a really mm -hmm. great solution for you to not only get out of your home every now and then, but you know, Adrian, I'm sure you've seen cross collaboration between companies that rent your space. Mm -hmm networking. I mean, it, you're really, you've fostered a community of like-minded people, which I think yeah. is something that is sometimes overlooked when we think about co-working spaces. We're like, I just got to get out of my living room, you know? Right. <laughs> and that is very valid, right? But yes. to me, when I go into a co-working space, like I meet so many interesting people and mm -hmm. almost always make some sort of business, business and personal connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely true. You know, and that's one of the things that I've seen. So, time at the yard in particular especially having worked in pretty much all of our locations at some point mm -hmm. and one way or another getting to see all the different teams getting to know and meet them um really sometimes getting to see them grow within the space and um, sometimes even out of the space it's all really beautiful to watch and you can see that from you know the individual entrepreneur that's just starting out to the company that's been around and established for 10 15 years right yeah well, and you've you've mm -hmm. seen a lot of those because you've been at the yard for what seven years now. Yeah, next year will be seven years. Wow. By the time this comes out, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, by the time this podcast is live, eight <laughs> months, seven years at the yard. So you've worked in a lot of positions. You have worked your mm -hmm. way up. You know the the north part mm -hmm. of the ladder. You know, I'd love if you could share any advice for people who are working at a, a bigger company. Who are also looking to, you know, continue to progress their career within that existing company. Um, you know, I'm giving a presentation on negotiations uh, okay. at, at the University of New Hampshire. And part of my presentation, it, the bulk of my presentation is, to me, negotiating is really the art of knowing your value and mm -hmm. your worth. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love for you to just share your experience working at the same company for so long, which, by the way, mm -hmm these days is still, it's kind of unheard of for so many days to work for so long. So A, yes. the company's doing something right to keep you. Um, yes. But B, like what, what has your journey been like and how have you navigated that upward mobility? Yeah, I think it starts with, you know, having a really, um, just a really strong understanding of your sense of self and what you bring to the table and also being willing and open to learning at every turn. Um, you know, for me, when I started out as a community manager, I wanted to be the best community manager that I could be. And, you know, I came in and I put my best foot forward. You know, coming into the co-working industry, it was something completely new for me. I, you know, hadn't even heard of it before I applied for the community manager role. And I was like, oh, this company looks cool. They have a cool website. Like, you know, let's, let's let me see what they're about. And um, once I got in and got the job, I really just put my best foot forward. I, you know, made connections with the members in my space. I was able to help grow that space to the occupants that we wanted it to do it to be at, you know, within a really short period of time, um, which all came from sort of my natural knack for being able to connect with people and um, network. And so my work showed for itself. And from there, I, a lot of emotions that I, you know, been able to get, I've actually just asked for, um, you know, some of them have been brought to me as well as, um, you know, so the direction that we're moving into the company and that I was a good fit for the role. But um, a couple of those first ones, I, I actually made the pitch. And so being able to, I think one, it definitely benefits working for a very small company. Um, you know, I have a good relationship with the CEO and founder and, you know, we worked very closely together. And so that's kind of where the work speaks for itself, where um, sometimes, you know, you might have to 
apply and you know go through different steps as far as like getting a promotion within a company but if you're at a company where there's a lot of visibility that definitely helps and so you know there were times when I felt ready to move on to the next role and I, I, I started the conversation and um, the alignment was there and you know that's that's how we helped get here yeah I think that uh, not enough people feel equipped to advocate for themselves. Yeah. You mentioned some of your earlier roles. And, and even now, I think th there may be days that you're advocating for yourself without even trying. You know, you're just mm -hmm. documenting the work you're doing and, you know, the mm -hmm. accomplishments that you're having. And yeah. I think it's something that, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's how we're raised that we shouldn't gloat or mm -hmm. we, it's considered gloating if we are sharing our accomplishments. Mm -hmm. um, or speaking up and saying what we what we want, what we need, mm -hmm. and what the value that we bring. And so, you know, for anyone watching who didn't hear my talk on negotiations, um, the best thing to me is know what you're worth, know the value that you bring, know all the skills that you carry, know the role that you're looking for, and and have something prepared of see all these. Mm -hmm roles and responsibilities on this job description, I'm already doing all those and then some. Yeah. I want this. I can make a big impact, you know, have a really big positive conversation and put it out there. One of two things is probably going to happen. You're going to get it or you're not. There's little, you know, minutia of scenarios that fall within that. But if you don't get it, you know, my advice is often, is there a reason you didn't get it? Are you, is this the right company for you? Is this the right role for you? You know, like the, every... Everything that we come into in our career is an opportunity for us to hit the pause button and reflect. And I don't think that we do that enough. I think we all try to move very linearly right mm -hmm. up the ladder mm -hmm. to the next thing. And we do, and now I do this and now I, my title is this and not always the case, but I think what? the only way to find that out is to self-advocate. Yeah, absolutely. We agree. You know, it does also come down to the company that you're with. You know, our very corporate and you do go from this position to this position to this position and people have to decide like you want to you know follow and be on that path or if you want to be able to kind of be more creative and um have different opportunities then you may may need to go down a different path. so i think it's sort of being honest with yourself about you know what do you want the next five, 10 years of not just your career but also your life to look like and actively you know making those decisions to to help make that a reality totally yeah Pause, reflect, act. I'm going to get that on a t-shirt. Okay, I'll send it to you. <laughs> yes. Don't let me forget that. I'm going to forget the second we get off this right. call. So the yard is a really great culture. There's work, there's growth, there's celebration, there's fun, there's sophistication, there's innovation. How has, how has that culture been for you? And how do you feel like you've continued to embody it? Um and do you find that, this is a multi-pronged question, by the way, buckle up, do you find that a lot of the, the clients and companies that use your space already kind of innately have that culture, or is it something that they just like to be a part of? So, so <laughs> um, for me, one, the culture has been something that you know, like kept me really excited and interested in coming to work every day. And that's a really important thing, especially if you're going to be good at your job, you should be happy going to work every day. You should want to um, show up and want to be your best and bring your best self to work. And so a big part of that is the culture of the company. And, you know, for me, initially starting out at the company, it was a culture that other senior leaders and HQ was you know, creating and cultivating for um, both employees and members. And as I've grown in the company, it's now the culture that to and cultivating, trying to create for employees and members. And so um, with culture, it's something that's constantly shifting, constantly changing. And, you know, everyone that's in the organization is a part of the culture. It's not just the, the organization themselves defining and deciding what the culture is. Everything that you do with an organization um, plays into its culture. And so once you have a lot of people working together towards the same ideas and goals about that culture, that's when you really get that synergy and people can feel and see it through throughout their time there. And so as far as, you know, members of our spaces, you know, we really also do our best to find 
to fit members into the spaces that they are going to be a good culture fit for as well. We have some spaces that are really full of lots of creatives. We have some spaces that's really full of lots of business and um, professional services. And, you know, depending on what someone's looking for, it's not always just the location um, and which one is most convenient to you. It might actually be which one has a high concentration of like one industry, which one is the place that I'm going to be able to best network at, which one is the one that is throwing more events and having more of that social vibe. And you can kind of find a little bit of a mix of all of it within there, but each location really does kind of lend to its own sort of culture hub within itself, you know, based off of the overall arts and culture for the company. And um, yeah, I think finding people finding the, the space that's the right fit for them in their culture, then also us really letting people know, hey, maybe this one might not be the best fit for you. Um, you might want to try this location instead, really kind of being honest with people about about that as well, because it really is about curating a community, which is not, you know, everyone is always going to get along, especially in a space when you're bringing all these different people together. That's Let's just not <laughs> realistic. Exactly. So <laughs> it's being honest with ourselves, being honest with people, and, to, you know, really helping to kind of facilitate the culture aspect of the spaces. And I think that differs from, in my personal experience, uh, some co working spaces that I have gone to. There is an immediate, like, sense. There's an immediate smell in the air of mm-hmm. what it's about, right? And and I've been mm-hmm. to some really lovely ones, and I've also been to ones where um, I was I felt really judged. I felt uh, like I, I wasn't. It wasn't a safe space for me to take phone calls, even in the designated phone call areas. You know, mm-hmm. it felt very competitive, mm-hmm. and I, I think that at least for me that type of culture and environment, I, I don't do well in that environment. You know, I'm very social and mm-hmm. I, I do want to chat, but I also really want to be able to buckle down and get stuff done. And, you know, so I think it's lovely that not only does the yard have, this is, this is who we are. We also have all these locations that each have their own kind of like, you know, swag vibe. To <laughs> and vibe. And like, this is me saying swag, by the way, Adrian means a millennial, not a Gen Z. Okay. I just, no. In 91. Okay. Final question for you. Yeah. Are you able to share anything exciting mm-hmm. or any innovations or anything that's upcoming for the yard, mm-hmm. <laughs> new locations, <laughs> anything fun that you're able to share with our viewers? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think one of the most exciting things that we're working on hopefully we can see at the end of the year next year is hopefully on um, several of our existing locations a part of really kind of coming from the pandemic and seeing the different ways that people are working now is reimagining the spaces for being able to kind of meet those needs and so taking a look at our spaces and we're looking at we've gone through uh, quite a bit of a brand refresh this year and so one added now to the physical uh, locations as well so new colors in the spaces and in conference rooms where we need that because people are a lot more um, haunted now these days than they were pre-pandemic, adding in phones where that's needed, um, really kind of rearranging and reimagining the spaces that we have, while also definitely keeping a pulse on the market and what's out there. And we're definitely going to be looking forward to opening some new locations in New York and possibly even beyond. Cool. Maybe maybe Boston and New Hampshire and <laughs> Maine and like Portsmouth. <laughs> Hampshire, and you know, just like slip it in. You're like <laughs> literally meeting. Like, oh, this a little birdie told me that there's some uh, d- demand in New Hampshire. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, I I wish you all the best, Adrian. It was so nice having you, you on. Too. It's really good to see you again. You too. If anyone is interested in learning more about the yard, Adrian and the yard will be tagged in this LinkedIn yes. post. Um, I really encourage you to check them out. It is a fantastic solution regardless of the stage of business that you're in. So Adrian, thank you again. I really appreciate you coming on to talk with us. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. For everyone watching, thanks for tuning into The Mill. We will see you next time.